All right, what we're doing here is we're actually reassembling an inner CV joint on a Porsche 996. However, this is a pretty common uh, CV joint design that's used in a lot of vehicles. As far as orientation of the parts goes, there's a few things you want to pay attention to when you're taking it apart. The first thing is this centerpiece, this star. You'll see there's a, uh, there's a raised lip here on one side of it, and it's flat on the other side right here. However, I've, I've heard in newer, more modern designs, it's flat on both sides, and the only way to tell the sides apart is to look at the actual center splines and they're recessed on one side. I've also seen photographic evidence of them installed backwards from the factory, so I'm not sure that it makes any difference at all, but in the interest of trying to do things exactly right, uh, it's something to pay attention to. The second piece is this inner cage. So at first it looks completely symmetrical, however, if you examine it really closely, you can see there's a beveled edge on one side of it. On the other side, it is not beveled. Um, the general consensus is that you want this beveled edge to face the axle itself to give it more clearance. However, I've seen images of brand new ones, genuine parts with it installed uh, facing the other way. So again, uh, not sure how much of a difference it makes or if it's application specific, so just pay attention to it when you take it apart. And the final piece is the outer race. And across the board, everybody seems to agree that these grooves uh, face the outside or away from the axle itself. In this case, it's facing the inside of the vehicle, but away from the axle. Although I have read that some people flip them around to spread out the wear with no ill effects. And if the centerpiece can be installed either way, I don't see why the outer piece can't be installed either way. Uh, but again, I'm just going to install it the way it was because that's how I'm going to do it. So I've already pressed this centerpiece back on, or I actually used a large socket and a hammer to put it back on with some copper anti-seize on the splines. And the key to putting this together is just patience. Um, there is one thing you absolutely must do and must get right, or you're gonna, the joint will bind up and it won't work properly. And if you look closely, you'll notice the spacing is irregular. There's a slot a slot with a small gap, and then there's a much larger gap between the next grouping of slots. And you have a very similar design on this inner race or inner star piece. What you want is to align them so that they are the opposites of one another. And what I mean by that is if, for example, you have a big gap at 12 o'clock on the outer race, when you're looking at it from one angle, you want to be looking at the inner one from the same angle and see a small gap lined up to that big gap. That's the key. If you have big gap lined up to big gap, uh, you can put it together, but it won't function properly. And if you try moving it around with your hands, you'll see that immediately. So on to assembling it. Make sure you have the gaps aligned properly. In this case, I'm gonna put the beveled in toward the drive shaft because it makes sense that way to me. I'm not sure why it would come installed the other way. Although, like I said, I've seen photos of people with brand new CV joints and it's installed that way. I like to start by just getting two of the uh, ball bearings in at the bottom and then working in the inner shaft. And sometimes it helps to kind of tilt it back, work it in once you have it like that. The key I found is to get it just far enough out to where it's about to fall apart and just work your way around it and put in one ball at a time, starting on one side and moving around. And sometimes you kind of have to lift the entire thing and tilt the shaft away to get room. And it is tricky to do by yourself. It helps to have another set of hands, but it can be done with some patience. So you can see it wants to kind of fall into place. And when it's like that, you obviously can't get the ball bearings in. So you want to just pull it out just to the point where the whole thing is about to fall apart. And I'm going to go against my own advice and drop that one in because it was possible right then. And sometimes to get them to actually seat and go into that outer race, you've got to pull the drive or the shaft out just a little bit and then let it get lined up with both of its channels. And another slight uh, tip, oops, 
tip here is if you have a little bit of grease on these, it does help quite a bit. It makes things a little bit more messy. Uh, so I may, if I have too much trouble here, add some grease to it. But again, you kind of like pull everything out just enough to where it's about to fall apart. In this case, it is falling apart. You get that to slide in. And then you kind of got to just shift things around. Watch those balls. <laughs> there we go. And then kind of work your way around. So I've got four in, which is a good start. Two more to go in this particular joint. Slide it back out. Yeah. It is tricky. Just this cage has to pull out almost straight all at once, which means your lower ones are going to be on the verge of falling out. So I got a good spot there. Five, well, almost five in. Wouldn't it be great if I'm able to get this to go together the first try on the video? That would be awesome. Again, I think a little bit of grease would help tremendously here. Hindsight is 2020. Okay. All right, so we're almost there. We've got five in. kind of like the moment of truth here. So you pull on it, and if you pull just, oh, that's just right. It's just about to fall apart. Oops. Okay, so that's seated, so now we just have to get it all to kind of snap back into place. There we go. Awesome, so it actually did go back together. So um, if you Google uh, Bentley service manual and CV joint, there, are, there is actually a trick to doing this where you spin the inner cage and the inner race around and you assemble it when it's not on the shaft. I believe that's probably the best way to do it, but then it requires putting the bearing or the uh, CV joint back on all in one piece. Uh, Caveat here, this is a used uh, CV joint that has, as far as I know, about 100,000 miles on it, so the tolerances are a little bit more loose. That might be why I'm able to reassemble it like this. If you have a brand new one, you might have to do the, the trick out of the Bentley manual where you rotate the inside around, uh, but that's how I did it anyway. So the entire thing is now reassembled, ready for grease, and then ready to attach the new boot. And if you were sitting here laughing the entire time I was doing this because you saw a very stupid and obvious mistake, uh, congratulations. I was more worried about getting the camera set up and figuring out how to film this than I was about thinking through the entire process. And in this case, I forgot something critical, and that is this. So in this particular application, this installs on the shaft itself, presses on to the CV joint, and this is what the boot actually goes connects to. So in order to get this onto the shaft, the joint cannot be on the shaft. So it looks like I get to remove the joint and get another round of practice to put this on. So don't forget to put that on. Don't forget to put your boot on first, which I did remember in this case. Um, and that'll save you having to take it apart again. Luckily, I realized all this prior to covering it in grease because that would have been uh, quite a mess. So Think through the stages and get everything you need on the shaft before you put your CD joint pack on.